so what's the latest on Love? Is he going to play this weekend? What do you think? Yes, he will play, as will you know his supporting cast on offense, and most of the starting defense will play as well. Matt LaFleur was talking this morning about just needing those guys, this young offensive core, to get as many reps as possible together, and also their lack of energy, lack of focus, slow starts, whatever you want to call it, in week one the last couple seasons – kind of also factors into LaFleur's decision to play his starters. Now, Jordan told us yesterday he feels ready for week one already. He feels ready for week one and beyond. Anything he does against the Seahawks on Saturday isn't really going to change how he feels heading into Soldier Field week one. But it's just another opportunity for a couple more people to come on the Jordan Love bandwagon, baby. Well, I mean, uh, the first two preseason games have been, um, for me, uh, enough – that I need to see and to, to know that he is, he's not struggling. He's not trying to grasp things. He looks comfortable. What he did against Belichick's defense to start the second preseason game was for me, um, all I needed to see. what, what do the Packers need to see other than just him getting more live game reps to put him out there? You know, I I saw the clip that uh, your show account tweeted the other day, and Mm -hmm. I responded to it with the gift from my favorite Christmas movie of all time, Polar Express, with the conductor of Polar (laughs) Express saying, all aboard. Because it feels like there is some momentum, uh, you know, coming along here of people are starting to realize he might be a guy. And I think what they want to see, getting back to your original question, is maybe for him to put together a complete performance. And I understand it's, you know, maybe only three series max, but against the Bengals in his first series. He missed Luke Musgrave wide open on a crosser. He missed a screen to Musgrave, and then he comes back and leads a touchdown drive the next drive. Against the Patriots, scoreless first two drives. I believe he started three for six. Uh, He played a part in a botched snap that the Patriots recovered on the first drive, but then he comes back and leads a 93-yard touchdown drive. So it's good that he's shown the ability to respond from slow starts, but maybe it'll be good to see him put together a complete three drives instead of starting slow, but the kid can throw the ball. He can move. I mean, I'm here at practice right now. I just saw the Packers run two triple options in like a span of five plays. I don't know what the hell they think they're doing right now, Mm. but it looks like Matt LaFleur is getting a little creative with a kid who can run at quarterback. Getting in his bag, getting in his bag. And what's it been like watching him operate uh, when not on the field? You know, I asked him yesterday if he's been able to – maybe take stock in where he is, the position he's in. Because after the first day of training camp, he was asked what kind of reception he got from fans. And he said, you know, I I didn't really notice that. I was so locked in. And I asked him yesterday, at any point over the last three-plus weeks, have you been able to take a breath and say, you know, this is pretty cool. I'm the starting quarterback. These fans are showing me love. And he hasn't really been able to. I mean, I have not seen – Anyone around here, granted I haven't been doing this for as long as some other people on this beat, but his temperament, his leadership, nothing seems to rattle him. And you brought it up earlier, he doesn't seem to panic. On the field, off the field, everything seems calm. And who knows if he's going to be any good on the field, but all the intangibles, the makeup, how he's handling the pressure, the expectations, any chaos around him on the field, it seems like all that stuff is going to set him up for success. Well, his first game at Chicago where he can prove that ownership of the Bears just changed quarterbacks, right? And then at Atlanta, which is breaking in a a first-time, full-time starter as well, he strolls into week three opener against New Orleans 2-0 and then takes on Detroit on that Thursday night. He'll be feeling the love in Green Bay, that's for damn sure, if that happens. And it's possible. You know? They don't play a team that made the playoffs last year until week eight, and that's the Vikings, who the Packers curb stomped here in week 17 last season. They start with those teams you mentioned, and then it's the Raiders on Monday night, week five, then they have a bye week six, then it's the Broncos week seven, and then week eight it's the Vikings, then the Rams week nine. So this is a very favorable schedule for the Packers the first half of the season. Now the second half there's the Chiefs, the Giants, the Chargers, but – You know, there is a chance, I'm not saying it's going to happen, but there's a chance the Packers enter their bye in week six at four and one, 
three and two, I think, would be successful. But if Jordan Love can not lose Packers games, if he can do enough to, you know, keep them in it, I think he's going to be an above average quarterback. They have the talent around him to, you know, not only win this division, but maybe make a run in a what I think is a weak NFC conference. Catch the Rich Eisen show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern for free. 